Yeah. The rest, the restoration process. There is a way for you to be restored to sanity. Yes, it is. Open your Bible. <laughs> Quick, open your Bible. I'm talking about step two. Open your Bible to uh, Mark. Mark, that's right, chapter 9, verse 17. Mark chapter 9, verse 17. Quickly. Mark chapter 9, verse 17. The disciples had brought a little boy to Jesus. And 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 I want you to know that uh, I, I, in my personal life, I operate out of the Bible and also out of the basic textbook and also out of this book that I'm reading from called Serenity. Uh, I, I don't just, you know, I, don't, I just don't just read the Bible. No, I don't just read the Bible. I read other books. I read, I read, I read commentaries, and I read other books that that give an analysis uh, of what the Bible is speaking about. Doing biblical exegesis. What am I reading? I have a dictionary. I have dictionary syllabuses. I have dictionary uh, 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 other books that help me to understand what I'm reading. Because even as a pastor, even though I'm an educator, I'm not. I don't know everything. So sometimes I have to refer to another book so that I can understand what I'm reading in the Word of God. And so here in this in this book that I'm reading, it's, it's entitled Serenity, chapter chapter nine of the book of the book of Mark, chapter nine beginning at verse uh, seventeen. Then one of the crowd answered and said, "Teacher, I brought you my son who has a mute spirit, and whenever it seizes him, it throws him down. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. So I spoke to your disciples that they should cast it out, but they could not. This is a father concerned about his son." Thank you, Jesus. So he answered and said, Oh, faithless generation, Jesus is talking to him. How long will I have to be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. Bring the boy to me, Jesus says. So they brought him to Jesus. And when he saw him, immediately the spirit convulsed and fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming at the mouth. Whenever you start to get, whenever you get ready to, to, to get delivered, your disease is going to jump up on you. Most people that come to see me, if they're alcoholics, they want to drink the night before. If they're drug addicts, they want to get high as a Georgia mule in plowing season or high as a Georgia pine the night before they come and see me. Why? Because when you get ready to get delivered, then your disease is going to jump up. Okay, so let it jump up. Just don't OD before you see me. Hallelujah. Somebody say praise the Lord. All right, so so here they brought this, this boy to Jesus. As soon as the boy comes to Jesus, then the spirit in and that demonic, that damnable spirit, because that's what it is. That's what addiction is. It's a damnable spirit because it'll send you straight to hell. The spirit threw the boy on the ground. He started wallowing and foaming at the mouth. So Jesus asked his father, look, how long has this, this boy been doing this? And he said, well, ever since he was a child. And so he said that often this, uh, this thing throws him into the fire and the water to destroy him. But Jesus, if you can you please have compassion on him and help us? He didn't just say help, help, help the boy. He said help us. Why? Because when a child, has a problem. And so many of our children today got drug problems. Mine had them, I'm telling you. So many of our children got, got drug problems. It affects the fathers and the mothers. It affects us. The grandmothers, the uncles, the aunts, the cousins, the nieces, the nephews. If we love them, it's going to affect them. So he didn't say, oh, Jesus, just help him. He said, Lord, have compassion on us and help us. So Jesus said, if you can believe, this is verse 23, if you can believe. Now we're talking about belief. All things are possible to him who what? Who believes. So immediately the father of, of the child cried out and said, said he, now this man, he's not the one that's got the problem. He's not the one that, 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 that's got the devil in him. But he cries out. He says, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. I believe, but help that part that I don't believe. That's critical. I'm going to come back to that. So when Jesus saw that the people came running together. He rebuked the unclean spirit, saying, Deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him and enter him no more. So the spirit cried out. The spirit cried out, convulsed him, threw the boy on the ground and all, and, and he be became as a dead man, as a dead person. So, so many people, they said, oh, he's dead. But Jesus took the boy by the hand, lifted him up, and he arose. That's what God will do. He'll send Jesus to pick you up and take you by the hand. Thank you, Lord. Verse 28, and when he had come into the house, the disciples asked him privately, oh, why, uh, Master, how come we couldn't do that? Why couldn't we cast him out? And Jesus said, because this kind comes out by nothing but prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting. That means you got to do without. You got to turn your plate down. You got to fast. 
if you go, I mean, you got to put the bottle down, put the alcohol down, put the pills down. You know, you got to put 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 down put down put down the wine, put down the, the Jack Daniels. You got to put put down the beer. You got to put it down, put it down, put the needle down, put the pipe down. You got to put it put put the toss paper down. You got to put it down. You have to put it down and pick up something else that's going to help you keep that other stuff down. You have to put it down and do what? Pray. You got to pray. You got you to gotta talk, to talk to a power greater than you. Sometimes your counselor might be a power greater than you. That's right. Sometimes you come, you, sometimes your doctor might be, will be a power greater than you because you can't handle it. Sometimes your wife might be a power greater than you. Yes, mister, you in charge of your house, you're a spiritual head of your house, but sometimes God works it out where he will have your wife. That's what happened to me. <laughs> if it wasn't for my wife, I would not be in recovery today. My wife is the one. She's the one. That's right. Who helped me when I couldn't help myself. And so what has to happen is you have to, have to admit that you have a problem. And after you admit that you have a problem, then you have to say, God help me to believe. The boy had to. So, so what happened was the father believed. Lord have mercy. So what's happening here? The father is crying out for, in belief for the son. That's what, that's what my wife did. My wife went to God and, and, and went to my superiors for me because I couldn't do it myself. I'm going to have to talk about this next time, next week, and come back. I'm Dr. Bosch P. Jordan, Jr., pastor and founder of Hope Alive Ministry. Those of you all, if you have not, send us a donation for this Uganda trip. Uh, I'm going to Uganda, Uganda, East Africa, May the 11th. Probably we'll leave on the 10th. Uh, to preach in the International Divine Conference in Kampala, East Africa. I got a budget of five thousand dollars. Got to pay my own way over there, pay for my hotel, and we and we want to leave at least a thousand dollars for them to build this new church and to help them with their ministry. The Bible says, "Given it should be given unto you." Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. If you want to help us in our ministry, write me a check. That's right. Write a seed. Write me a seed, a check for a seed, a seed for a check, whatever. A hundred dollars, five hundred dollars, a thousand dollars, whatever. Somebody, somebody, maybe, maybe your church might want to foot the whole bill. But we but we whatever you do, send it to Hope Alive Outreach. Hope Alive Outreach, 2310 North Fulton Avenue. 2310 North Fulton Avenue. Don't forget to come to church tomorrow morning if you can. Hope Alive Ministry, 2310 North Fulton Avenue. Look us up on the World Wide Web if you want more information. Or call me, 410-383-8055. And remember, no matter what's going on with you today, there is hope for you. I'm Dr. Jordan. Good morning.